Hi, Lord of Life family. It's Katie. I have a silly story for you today. This is my son, Jonathan. He was just about a year old in this video, and it was his very first time seeing bubble wrap. What both my husband and I thought would be an exciting new toy actually turned out to be a very scary encounter. We put it on the floor, we popped a couple of the bubbles, and we tried to encourage him to come play with us. I crossed over it several times to show him that there was nothing to be scared of. Then I sat on the stairs, calling his name and encouraging him to step through. It didn't matter that we could walk over it. The memory of hearing those popping bubbles was just paralyzing to him. We tried to get him to see that it was safe and actually fun to play with. At one point, we even tried bribing him with Skittles to encourage him to literally get over his fear of the bubble wrap, but nothing was giving him the courage to try. Just about the time I thought he was ready to give up, Jonathan walked up to the closet and dragged out Alex's sandals. He handed them to his daddy. Alex tossed them back into the closet. Then Jonathan went back and grabbed them a second time. And as he handed them to Alex this time, he grunted and kind of made a little squealing noise as he put them on Alex's lap, essentially asking him to help put these big size 12 shoes on his tiny little baby feet. But dads know what their children need better than they do. At this point, Jonathan was ready for help. Alex scooped Jonathan up and laid him on the footstool. Then he proceeded to suit him up for bubble wrap battle by slipping his socks onto each little tiny foot. Jonathan squealed in delight as he waited. Then he was ready. With daddy's socks of courage on, he could do anything. Alex put him on the floor, ready to go. He did it. Friends, that was more than a silly story. I told you that so I can tell you this. So often I can be just like Jonathan. We've all been there. New food, a new job, a new relationship, God calling you to a new ministry opportunity. New stuff can be really scary. Sometimes, no matter how badly you want to overcome your fear, you're incapable of doing it on your own. It's impossible. I might as well just quit. <sighs> So I swallow my pride and my insistence on independence and ask for help. Daddy, please help me. I need you. I can't do this on my own. Just like Jonathan, at what point in the journey do I ask my heavenly father for help? In scripture, the command is simple. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. So often, I'm just like Jonathan. I try everything to do it on my own first. I psych myself up. I take a running start. I try to convince myself that I can do it on my own. And only once I've tried and tried and tried and gotten frustrated, do I go to God for help. But why do I make things so hard on myself? He was sitting right there the whole time with a solution so much better than my own silly ideas but I fear and I fret and I hold onto that burden like it's a life raft more than the millstone that it really is. Philippians mirrors Matthew in the order and frequency with which we should be taking things to God. Do not be anxious about everything, but in every situation by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And why? Because he loves us. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Will you pray with me? Heavenly Father, your mercies and faithfulness never cease. Your love is unconditional. Turn my face away from my fears and help me to focus on you. Encourage me always to seek you first in praise and in prayer. Help me to remind my problems who you are so that when I encounter bubble wrap along my path, as I certainly will, I do not stumble or stall. Remove from my heart all traces of fear and fill the empty space with trust in what you will provide. In your son's name, I ask these things. Amen.